Hi, today we're going to be looking at the nation's health. I'm joined by Lewis Montague, who is the managing director of the Water Ionising Company. He's been a researcher in health issues for many years and he's also the Secretary General of the Natural World Organisation. Hi Lewis, thanks for joining us. Pleasure to be here. <laughs> OK, so what drew you to the interest of, of our physical health? Gosh, uh, about 15 years ago I was enticed to wear magnetic insoles in my shoes. I play a lot of sport, uh, tennis, squash, badminton, and a martial artist, and my knees were getting worse every year with pain, and uh, I didn't want to do it. I was so skeptical, it was unbelievable. And, uh, but, uh, and when you're in pain, you try all sorts of things. So I tried these magnetic insoles, and after two or three weeks, the pain subsided in my knees. I couldn't believe it. I knew it wasn't psychosomatic because I didn't think it was going to work for one second. However, it did. So that turned me on to thinking and researching about health. I realised I didn't know much about it. I was very fit. And when you're fit, of course, you think you're healthy, which isn't the case. Because really, when you're healthy, you should also be fit. But fitness on its own is great, but it's not the ideal if you haven't uh, touched all the other areas of your life in terms of health. So uh, I started to study uh, the physiology, the anatomy of the body, I looked at nutrition and I started to realise what you needed to be eating. Uh, so I became organic, I started to buy things uh, all organic. Then uh, after a time I became vegetarian when I learnt more. And then I went on to a website called uh, notmilk.com, Robert Cohen's site, it's a great site, and I became vegan overnight. Really? Absolutely. Yeah. And then uh, time went on again, as my knowledge base increased, I then realised that uh, I needed to be as much raw food as I could. And that came about from my research into cancer treatments, natural cancer treatments, when uh, been to many countries looking at the treatments, talking to the gurus out there. And uh, whilst the protocols are different around the world, the common factor really is the diet. It's always vegan, raw food, green, sprouting food. Right, great. This is so ultimate health. Yeah. Yeah. What, what kind of effects were you seeing when you made the shift from, from a meat diet to a, to a vegan diet? What kind of physical shifts did you feel? Well, it's... It, Coincided with me also getting a water ionizer in the very early days, and uh, that helps to really alkalize the body. So that and reducing meat intake, which is very acidic forming after metabolism, uh, just made me feel so good. I have energy, tons of energy, and playing sport was really good, uh, which I haven't stopped, and I think it's important never to stop playing sport. But as long as you feed the body, give it the nutrients it needs to be healthy, mm. you can carry on. It doesn't matter how old you are. Just don't ask how old I am. <laughs> but, uh, so the ideal is to keep the body fit, the cells fit, and exercise. Keep the body moving. Mm. But we'll come okay. back to that. T tell me a bit of it about what you see the problem is with the nation's health. Okay, well, wow. Uh, well, if you look at the... There are five, five or six areas that you need to look at constantly. And these are the five areas you need to look at when you become ill. The first one is pollution. Pollution is a major, major problem. And there are three areas to that, really. There's external pollution. We all know about car fumes mm. and things coming out of factories. Uh, that's a big issue. You go into the countryside because you think that's better. Then you have the farmers putting all their herbicides and in fact it, it, into exercise it, it, it's all over yeah. pesticides and you're inhaling this stuff mm. you, you can't not inhale it and those chemicals do get into the body and we know they are carcinogenic the second part is in your house in the home wow that's a massive trap that's far worse than being outside because think of all the chemicals you have in the house the use for cleaning mm -hmm. Just to, to, to start with. But how many people realise the chemicals in carpets, fire retardant, upholstery, mm -hmm. this isn't so bad, but it's there and you are ingesting it. 
our pets, the poor things, are going down with cancer all over the place. When their noses are so close to the floor, they must be ingesting it mm, at a rapid rate Virtually direct as well. contact with them. So yeah. the pollution is a big issue. Then the third part is what you put on the body. Mm -hmm. uh, shampoos, toothpaste, creams, makeup. Make sure that they're free of chemicals because we now know this absorbs into our bloodstream very easily. And again, it's in the blood, it's in the body, it's a problem, it's carcinogenic. Uh, so then, after pollution, you're looking at hydration. We don't drink enough water, guys, water. We don't drink enough. Uh, there's a formula on how much you should drink. It's based on your weight. You go to the doctor, he'll say drink six or eight glasses a day, whether you're eight stone or 18 stone. Does that make sense? There's more fluid in the bigger person, so you need to drink more. Dehydration is a major problem. Dehydration, if you don't hydrate with water, you will end up with cellular dehydration, chronic cellular dehydration. So the beginning of the breakdown of your cells. So hydration is absolutely essential. The waters vary. We talk about tap water, mm. you have your own opinions about that. There's of filtered course, water. The, the quality of the water is a huge issue, isn't absolutely it? Absolutely right. So yeah. you have to be careful with that and do, do your homework. There's reverse osmosis, which takes everything out of your water, distillation. Because we're looking to take out the, the fluoride, the, the chlorine. Yes. Yeah. Um, what else are we Heavy looking to remove? Metals, Heavy metals, estrogen, uh, other estrogen, chemicals, yeah. Yeah, yeah. all that sort of stuff. Uh, needs to be out of the water. There's a, a water ionizer, as I mentioned before, which is very good. So there are lots of things you can do to educate yourself as to what water you should really be drinking. Then there's the big one, diet. Mm. Wow. Uh, what is a good diet? And you'll find a thousand opinions on that. And uh, well, all I can say is the research that I've done I have no doubts that uh, being a vegan, as I am an organic vegan raw food, as I've said, uh, is the answer. We know that eating meat is going to acidify in the body after metabolism. All animal-based food will. Uh, Plant-based food is very healthy, but again, it doesn't guarantee you're going to be really healthy because you mm. have to ensure you get a, across the board. It, it, it's a balancing act. Whether you're a vegetarian, a meat eater, a vegan, whatever, you've still got to ensure you're eating across the board. And to of course, cover the quality the of, the, of the vegetables, if, you, if you're vegetarian and vegan, the quality of, of the vegetables is, is hugely important. Absolutely. Isn't it? You know. And of course, even though you're eating organic food, all that means is you're eating food that hasn't been contaminated with all those. Uh, chemicals mm -hmm. for put on by the farmers. What it doesn't guarantee is the nutrient content of the food because our soils, are, we, we just know our soils are being, being depleted of minerals all over the place. So Indeed, organic yeah. food is great for what you will not take in, but it doesn't guarantee the best of what should be it the plant It doesn't replace the, no. yeah, what so should be there. Supplementation is the answer. And, right. always, and there's so many variations of that. That's another but then, of course, yeah, that's another show, and the yeah, quality of the supplements yeah. is another issue, isn't it? Absolutely. So, yeah. so I describe, okay, meat. First of all, if you're eating meat, you're eating decomposing flesh of we wherever are. it's coming Fact. from. It's yeah. dead, isn't it? It you, is. It's, it's been dead. killed, and as soon as you kill anything, it starts to decompose. Of course. So if you think of the, the two or three main an, an, animals we eat, they're vegan, aren't they? They're, they are vegan. They're yeah. cow, they're sheep, they're vegan. And so, this do is we eat, Do we eat any meat-eating, any carnivorous animals? I don't think, do well, we? Well, okay, people say maybe a pig can eat other things, mm. but a pig can still survive in a plant-based uh, okay. diet okay. as well. But, mm -hmm. uh, and so, what you're doing, when you think about it, is this, these animals are eating their plant-based foods, whatever they are, and they're taking in the vitamins and the minerals, the amino acids and the enzymes, and they're using that up in their body. Those vitamins and minerals are the nutrients that they need, mm -hmm. which are, are being burnt out by the body. Then you have uh, amino acids. Amino acids, we generally synthesize most of those in the body. There's about eight or nine that we can't, so we need to eat those from 
from plant-based uh, food. And so enzymes, we, we have to eat those from the plant-based food. But an animal does this and it's using it in the body, it's using itself. So when you're eating an animal, you're eating second-hand food. Yeah. It's already been utilised by the animal. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Isn't that mad? Yes. And you, you, people say, yes, but weren't we meant to eat meat? Well, look at a carnivore's intestinal tract. It's a third of the size of ours. The lower in intestine is smooth to get that meat in and out again. Mm. We can't do that. Yeah, we've, we've pockets, have we? That's right. It's like, a, I think the term saccharated, and it's stopping things getting through. It's meant to be for fibre, in, in okay. a way, to, to allow the fibre to slowly be absorbed what it can absorb. Uh, and so meat has nowhere to go, which is why you get mucoid plaque build-up in the colon and the lower which, intestine. Which will cause illness and, and you know, depleted Colonic energy levels, Colonic illnesses I'm sure. are just, uh, just horrendous. Mm. Uh, many start from there. And so there's another big issue with the protein. Mm -hmm. uh, people think you need to eat meat for protein. Okay, iron is, is, is one. They also say... Uh, but protein in the main is made in the body. Uh, the world bodybuilding champions are vegan. Uh, I met this weekend at the VegFest in London. Uh, many bodybuilders were vegan. So it is that's, that's a nonsense to believe you need protein mm, from an animal. Because this is a, a huge belief. I mean, people, yes. people uh, you know, we're very well aware that we need protein to build up our muscles and, to, right. and to thrive. Um, however, you're, you're stating the case that it doesn't need to come from, from animal product. We, Correct, can, we yeah. can derive it from vegetables. Without any doubt whatsoever. Yeah. Plant-based foods. Again, right, right across peas, uh, uh, seeds, nuts, yeah. beans, it, it, it's, it's everywhere. The enzymes and uh, amino acids are everywhere. Mm -hmm. But again, there's maybe 200 we tend to talk about and 20 of those are needed for the building blocks for protein. But we synthesize almost all those except about eight okay. essential amino acids which we need to take from an, another source. There's even an argument if you're eating protein from an animal, it's a complete protein because it's perfectly formed in the animal. Okay. You've got to break it down when you eat it. Mm. So you body takes a lot of effort to break that down back into amino acids. So it's using unnecessary energy, Correct. whereas you know, we, could, we right. could be reserving that energy yeah. um, by yeah. eating the protein direct Absolutely. from the plant. So diet is a big issue and it's for me the most important one because you can deal with so many illnesses uh, by feeding the cells before they degenerate okay. and that's what it's all about. Definitely. So then you go on to something you may n not have heard of yourself, stress. Have you heard of stress? Uh, yes, have I have heard, heard of stress. Stress, <laughs> uh, stress <laughs> is a major issue. It, yeah. It's a killer. And when you think of the it lives is. we lead, mm. I mean, who isn't a slave to money? We're, we, we're, we're slaves to debt, aren't we? We're slaves to debt, it's, indeed, it's yeah. It's atrocious. Indeed. And, and our relationship with, with money, yeah. uh, it, you know, essentially the relationship yeah. that we have with, with our financial situation is the stress, isn't it? That's Correct. what we need to yeah. look at, I think. And so stress produces hormones. They can't escape because we're not using the, the fight and flight thing. Mm. And it stays in the body and it's just not healthy. Then there's, um, it, it's not just stress, it's, it's, it's emotional stuff. Of course. It's trapped emotions. Yeah, so stuck emotion. Don't even know how they've got them. Exactly, indeed. From childhood, and you go back and you start finding out, why do I act this way? Mm. There must be a reason. So there's, there's so many things you can do for that. EFT, yeah. mm, of emotional course, yeah. freedom techniques. Technique, a great yeah. uh, therapy. Great release, yeah. It's it? a great release, it's a great therapy, and it's. Yeah. It works. <laughs> Absolutely. It, it works. It's huge around the world. Mm. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's everywhere because it does work. Uh, even some of the doctors are beginning to understand yeah. it, yeah. which is good news. Uh, and so stress, trauma, emotional, all this stuff needs to be addressed. With, with any illness, especially a serious one like cancer, because positive thinking is essential. Mm -hmm. You've got to really believe what you're doing is going to work. And it will work if you have the belief, because that's half the battle. Uh, so a very important aspect of the, one of the things you have to address. Then 
After that, you've got exercise. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't we get all enough talk by about far, exercise. do we? No, we don't. We really we don't. don't. And you can break that down into aerobic. You've got to be able to stretch. Stretch the muscles. Look at animals, dogs. When they wake up, what do they do? But yeah, they, they all, stretch. Oh, yeah. Why, don't, why do they know what to do and we don't? And it's instinct, isn't it, I think? Yeah. And we, we definitely have been. It's greater stretch and, and the areas you know, all over the body stretch, your legs mm -hmm. and your pelvic area. Just keep moving. Mm. Uh, and then there's weight-bearing exercise. And then this is essential for everybody. Uh, we talk about osteoporosis and, and in the bones and things. And how many people know that if you grow the muscles, if you tone your muscles, your bones grow with the muscle. So forget the bones, just deal with the muscles. Mm. Then we talk about calcium. Oh, that, that's another big issue. Milk. You need calcium from milk. There's yeah? a big argument about milk, isn't there? I know there's, yeah. a, there's a well, big... Well, what can I say about that? Uh, milk it, yeah. is for growth. Milk is used by all the mammals in the world to feed their young, their offspring. Uh, however, there's only one mammal that continues drinking milk beyond the weaning stage. Mm. The intelligent one. Now, who would that <laughs> be? Uh, yeah, the good old human. But not only do we continue drinking milk, we actually drink the bodily fluid of an animal. Of another it's one. not even our own milk, is no, it? Just think it. about it. And when people say to me, oh, I've got an intolerance to milk, I say, oh, you lucky person. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> you know, intolerances to wheat and milk, we've all heard about. I mean, there are millions of people who have mm, those. Yes. But nobody questions it. Nobody says why. Well, and was, did, were these intolerances around maybe 60, 70 years ago? Uh, we don't know how far they go back. I suppose we become you know, more aware of what's oh, happening. To is the it body, a possibility really? that the grain is the issue? And I think not uh, our digestive well, talking system. about wheat, then yes. Uh, you have to really go back to ancient wheat, which is a different structure completely to the wheat we have today. Mm. Wheat today is not so good. I'm trying to be kind here, but I wouldn't touch it with a barge pole no. uh, because of what it can do to the body. Mm. We know the DNA in, in short, strand, in short uh, wheat, which is the ancient wheat, mm. hasn't been hybridized, uh, modified, has a DNA of an, it, three, four, five to ten, Whereas we believe that the DNA in the, long, uh, in the short stuff today is over 100. Mm -hmm. It's been changed so much, the body doesn't recognize it. Yeah. And that's a, yeah. that is, is a real shame. Uh, milk, how far we go back for intolerances there, I don't know. Because I have no doubts, for me, milk is for growth and it's for babies. And we, we pump it into our kids and uh, well, reaching puberty it. years before that time. And the question is, should the should the, the growing babies be, be taking milk from another animal? No. It should, you know, should no. it not be breast milk, the, bre the, the milk from the mother, yeah. from the, na you know, yeah. the natal mother? It just, yeah. it, common sense, you know. It, it is common sense. Uh, we've but lost all. <laughs> we've lost it because of the marketing, the pressure of course. from establishment. Of they course. don't want you to know this stuff. No, but, uh, no, because we'd be healthy and thriving then. <gasps> yes, <laughs> and gosh, what would happen to the pharmaceuticals? <laughs> A pharmaceutical in industry, industry in there. of course yeah so I believe that you should not stop moving keep the yeah. body moving there's no reason if you've got stairs walk upstairs don't go lifts I mean I would walk upstairs I, to, I would go out of my way to walk upstairs rather than a lift or elevator uh, you've just got to keep the body moving this is what we're meant to do and how many times do you hear somebody say, oh, you're, you're middle-aged now, you're in your 40s, and you better start slowing down. What a load yeah. of tosh that yeah. is. As long as you feed the cells of the body, then you don't have a problem. Mm. And going back to pollution, I mean, the other thing that's now becoming, which is quite new, but uh, is, of course, the Wi-Fi and wireless. Indeed, yeah. Electromagnetic fields. Yeah. This is really a disaster. Go and look up Barry Trower. I mean, just look at his work. Uh, I will not have it in the house. It's not in our offices. Everything is on a, a cable. Uh, because it's microwaves, and microwaves are just, just destroying mm. us. And I've seen 
scientists talk about this and make statements like, if we thought smoking was bad, you ain't seen nothing yet. Mm, right. I mean, this is affecting uh, cells in the body, in, in the brain. Is there evidence about it? There is evidence out there. But we're going to have to wait another, what, 10, 15 years when more and more people die of before course, we start accepting something wrong. it's very new technology, wrong. isn't it, in, in terms of uh, domestically? Yeah. I mean, it's, what, maybe four years, five years? I'm not sure how, how, mm. how long it's been about domestically, but it's, yeah. um, we just don't know. We but don't we know what's schools. happening. Yeah. You know, if there's any doubt, if there is a doubt, don't put it into schools. Mm. Those poor kids with a skull thickness half the size of an adult, they've got no chance if they're completely surrounded by these microwaves coming out of everywhere. It's just terrible it is, what's yeah. happening. I just wanted to move on, well, we've still got time, just to talk about the, um, the issue of alkalizing the body and the cancer issue, because I know you're passionate about this and you've got a lot of information that you'd like to share with us. So for a couple of minutes before we finish, okay. let's touch uh, on that. Well, there are many aspects as to, as to why cancer happens, but just look at the existing system, oncology, the allopathic approach. That's, uh, uh, allopathic medicine is diagnosing and treating with synthetically produced drugs. Okay. That's what allopathic basically means. And so chemothera has, chemotherapy has been around a long time as, as the radio, radiology and, uh, and, and the surgery. We unfairly refer to them as a cut and burn and poison brigade. Mm. Maybe that's a bit unfair, but uh, you get the gist of what they do. Yeah. Chemo poisons, the radio burns, and the surgery cuts. cuts. Yeah. And they're very quick to want to do it. As far as we know, cancerous cells can take 10, 15 plus years to manifest as a tumour. So a tumour is purely the symptom of cancer. It is not the cancer. It's the result of having cancer. Yes that's created those cancer cells in, in the first place. Now what the oncology lot do is they deal with the symptom of cancer by just looking at the tumour. Mm -hmm. They can either try to take it out and they do a pretty bad job on the whole of that. Uh, whereas the holistic approach, the natural approach, is looking at the, the cause of cancer, looking at the terrain of the body, you will hear people say, well, it's in the genes, it's in the family. Mm. And I, I, no, it isn't. And if it is in the genes, because somebody else has had it in the family, all it means is that you may have a predisposition to contracting that illness if you give it the environment in which to do so. So, hey, don't do it. Don't be the same as the person that had the cancer in the family. My oldest friend had a heart attack at the beginning of, of this year. And the doctors said to him, look, don't worry about your lifestyle. You, we can see it's in the family. So there's nothing you can do about yeah. it. So look, take these drugs for the rest of your life and you'll be okay. That's just horrendous, isn't mm, it? Yeah. I mean, uh, he's a very old friend and this is a problem. You can't talk to friends or your family about this stuff, okay? You can only, only talk to strangers because uh, it's very hard to convince them. It is. About it. It but, can uh, be. Cancer can be dealt with in many ways. There are many different ways to deal with it. And we discover more and more almost on a, a weekly basis. Mm. And what we're trying to do is uh, go down the path of scientifically researching some of the, the more well-known cancer treatments so that maybe we could actually take this published research, peer-reviewed, in a format that's acceptable to the scientific community mm -hmm. and the medical industry and say, guys, you say we don't have the evidence. And they do that. And they're right to say that because we don't have the evidence that would convince the public and the doctors that this stuff works. You can have all the stories in the world, but until you go down that ridiculous path of scientific research, mm which you need to do with, with, synthet with synthetically produced chemicals, drugs. But natural treatments, you don't really need to do it. But to get the message across, we've got to do it. And so when we've got this information available, uh, we then need to get it in front of the right people. So who are they? Public, 
No. No point in giving to the public. The, pu the public live by doctors. They go to doctors and because that's the system. They, they believe the doctors. And most doctors are doing what they believe is the right thing. I accept that. When you think of their training in six years, they may spend a few hours looking at nutrition. Well, how ridiculous is that? Hippocrates, the alleged grandfather of medicine, makes this very well-quoted statement about, let medicine be thy food and food be thy medicine. Well, what happened to that? So doctors have a, a big issue with that. And uh, so we need to go to the doctors, if not the public. The answer, no, we don't. That's a waste of time because doctors are controlled by their organisations in every country, BMA, they've got, to, they've got to toe the line. I've spoken to so many doctors over the years and they confess to me they agree with what I'm saying, but they can do nothing about it okay. because they're controlled by up there. So, so we need to get this information. Solution? So well, what's your solution We send the up? proper scientific information to the offices of these organisations that control the medical industry. Right. We send it to them and we put them on notice that we're doing it publicly and openly. Okay. So we can see, and we're sending as individuals, not to organisations, individuals, John Smith, CEO, whatever. Those that, are who are accountable for their, for their who company. Who are making the decisions, mm -hmm. who are controlled. And if they don't respond after a few weeks, then on our websites, we'll be making sure the public know what's going on. Okay. And then ask the public to vote. Is that person stupid or just corrupt? Let's find out which one it is. Yeah. Indeed. So okay, well, there's so much more to talk about. Oh, yeah. And, you know, we've touched on, on many of the subjects that we hope to. But um, as I said, Indeed. there is a lot more. You know, this goes into, you know, in depth, just beyond the time limit that we've got today. Oh, so no. maybe you could come back again and talk to us on specific issues and yeah. then we can investigate further and, okay, great. and see how that goes. Okay, yeah. thanks Thank very you. much, Lewis. Thank Cheers. you. Thank you.